What would happen to you if you drank a zombie's perk in real life? In zombies lore, perk drinks were invented by Group 935 as a kind of super serum for soldiers that would enhance their bodies and give them certain abilities. For example, Juggernaut would allow a person to take a couple more beatings than he or she normally could. Quick Revive would of course allow a person to get back up after getting downed, and Stamina Up would allow a person to run faster. But what if these drinks existed in real life? What would happen if you drank them? Would they just give you an energy boost like a Red Bull or a Monster? Or would they enhance your body like they do in the game? And would they even taste good? Well, let's start by taking a look at the ingredients in Juggernog. At first glance, the ingredients seem pretty normal. Carbonated milk and spinach juice. Spinach juice, although it probably tastes like garbage, is actually good for you. And carbonated milk, I just found out, is actually a popular drink in most East Asian countries. The next ingredient is fortified with iron. That's such a weird way to write an ingredient, fortified with iron. But it basically just means they added extra iron to the drink. But then we start getting into some strange ingredients, like powdered crocodile eggs and pure gumption. Powdered crocodile eggs probably aren't much different than normal powdered eggs, but they are illegal to eat in America. Pure gumption isn't actually something that is material. It's a thought. A concept. Gumption just means courage. You know, if Juggernaut existed in real life, I'd probably have a wife and kids by now, but the wife would probably divorce me over the weight gain that comes from Juggernaut. One can of Juggernaut has about 1,000 calories. That's 40% of the recommended calorie intake per day. And the fat content of Jug is even more concerning. According to the USDA, the recommended daily fat intake of someone who is very active, works out, etc., is around 93 grams. But for someone like me, with chronic couch potato syndrome, the recommended amount is about 73 grams. Guess how much fat this drink has? Just guess, put your guesses in now. I'll wait for three seconds. Three, two, one. It's 70 grams. Now that I think of it, those powdered crocodile eggs probably are chalk full of fat and cholesterol. On top of that, Jug has 5,000 grams of carbs, 90 grams of sugar, and 400 grams of protein. The only thing in this drink that is a reasonable amount is the sodium level. Now in game, Speed Cola allows you to reload faster, but in real life, this drink is more or less just going to make you really hyper. Speed Cola is pretty similar to Coca-Cola. It's got ingredients like carbonated water, glucose, it's basically sugar if you don't know what that means, cola nut extract, and caffeine. Then we have cayenne pepper, possibly for extra flavor, and it's helpful for digestion, reducing high blood pressure, reducing inflammation, and it can reduce your risk of cancer. But unfortunately, I think those benefits are cancelled out by the hydrolyzed crank that's in it, more commonly known as crystal meth or methamphetamines. Now, lastly, the ingredients also include guarana and taurine, which are commonly found in energy drinks. They're the ingredients responsible for giving you that jolt of energy after drinking it. So moving up, we got the calorie count. Speed Cola has 0 to 60 calories. Total fat is 0, so that's a plus. Oh, but the carbs are 2,500 grams. Jeez. And sugar, 100 grams. Sodium is 45 grams, and protein is zero. Quick revive, if you wanna get up. And in theory, that should be what happens in real life, because one of the ingredients is adrenaline. You're definitely going to taste some unique flavors while drinking this, though, because it also includes anchovy paste, and chicken broth concentrate. But hey, they're still edible. However, there's also some non-edible things in it, like trench water. In parentheses, it says a product of Russia, and feline urea, which is why Dempsey says this. Yeah. 
tastes like fermented herring dipped in cat piss. Let's talk about trench water. Trench water is going to include things like dirt, toxic metals, and bacteria. Your body does not have enzymes to digest dirt. And when dirt gets wet, it clumps together. So your intestines are gonna get blocked up. Then on top of that, if you eat dirt, you can ingest harmful parasites and toxic heavy metals like arsenic, cadmium, and lead. Just at low levels, these metals will poison you and cause cancer. Not to mention, if the dirt is filled with high amounts of potassium, according to healthline.com, it can lead to high potassium levels in your blood and increases your risk for cardiac arrhythmia or even cardiac arrest. Now the final ingredient in Quick Revive is ammonium salts, aka smelling salts. Smelling salts are usually used to get someone up after they've fainted or gotten a concussion. Usually, it would be brought up to the person's nose and the strong smell will wake him or her up. If you're in the US, you can literally buy smelling salts at your local CVS. They're not exactly safe to drink though, as they do contain ammonia and ethanol. Seriously, do not try to drink this thinking it's gonna work like Quick Revive does in game. Beyond that, here's the rest of the nutrition label. From here on out, the ingredients in these perk drinks are gonna get way worse. So if you can, please don't forget to subscribe. It's free. If you didn't enjoy the video by the end, you can always take your subscription back. Anyways, let's talk about stamina. Up. Traditionally, stamina up makes you run faster. You can get around the bigger maps pretty quickly after drinking a stamina up. But let's see if that's the case in real life. Are you going to be able to run a 5k after drinking this? Ingredients include lemon juice, lime shavings. So you're going to be getting a good amount of vitamin C from this. But here's the best part. And I know some of you in the audience probably enjoy the smell of this ingredient. Are you ready? Wait for it. It's high octane gasoline. Please, for your own sake and for mine, do not continue smelling gasoline, much less drink it. In really, really small amounts, ingesting gasoline can cause symptoms like vomiting, heartburn, drowsiness, vertigo, slurred speech, facial flushing, staggering, weakness, loss of consciousness, lung and internal organ hemorrhaging, and heart failure. Whew, that was a huge list. Just two ounces of this stuff will intoxicate your blood. And then between that and 12 ounces can kill you. Just depends on your weight. Other ingredients in Stamina Up include vitamin K, which is a vitamin that helps with blood clotting, capsaicin, which is what gives hot peppers their heat, and it's also used in arthritis and psoriasis creams. And the last ingredient in Stamina Up is jumping bean extract. That just sounds nasty. Jumping beans are these little seed pods that have moth larva living inside of them, and when heat touches these pods, they start jumping around, hence why they're called jumping beans. But I can't imagine they're gonna taste too good in a drink, unless you like the taste of moth. Elemental Pop. Elemental Pop is an awfully new perk. It just showed up in Cold War Zombies. And what it does is once in a while when you're shooting a gun, it will randomly give an elemental upgrade to a couple of your bullets. It gives you the upgrades from those ammo mods available at Pack-a-Punch, you know, Cryo Freeze, Dead Wire, Napalm Blast, Brain Rot, and Shatter Blast. Elemental Pop advertises a whopping one calorie. Zero grams of fat, zero carbs, zero sugars, and zero protein. So this would serve as like a diet soda or like Coke Zero in real life. However, what's really concerning is the amount of salt. Now Elemental Pop says it has 45 grams of sodium. And up until this point, I didn't realize that sodium was written on these cans in grams. Sodium is usually written in milligrams, and one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams of sodium. I really hope this was a typo on the graphic designer's part, because that means this drink actually has 45,000 milligrams of sodium. That is one salty drink. My goodness. Before I ever saw the ingredients list for Elemental Pop, I always just thought they put Pop Rocks in this drink. I couldn't tell you why, it's probably because of the fireworks that go off when you drink it, but I really thought this was the case. Boy, was I way off. The majority of these ingredients are just normal vitamins that you can get from food and supplements. It has calcium, chromium, phosphorus, magnesium, zinc, 
sulfur. The other two ingredients, bromide seltzer and 2% ethereum, which isn't a real thing, aren't vitamins. Bromide seltzer, also known as bromo seltzer, was taken off pharmacy shelves in the US in 75. From the 1890s till 1975, it was used as a hangover cure for its sedating effects. When it was still on shelves, you would normally take a teaspoon or so of it and mix it with water. However, it was taken off shelves because it was considered toxic. With the headshot, headshot now in game, Deadshot Daiquiri helps you get more headshots. In real life, it's gonna do nothing of the sort. The main ingredient in Deadshot Daiquiri is denatured rum. While this isn't a real thing, denatured alcohol is alcohol used for cleaning, and small amounts of it can be found in some cosmetic and hair products, and hand sanitizers even. But the reason why it's called denatured is because the manufacturers put a whole bunch of chemicals in it to change it, to make it taste and smell bad so little kids don't like to drink it, or older people don't want to use it recreationally. Other than that, the rest of the ingredients are cane sugar, strawberry oil, ginseng? Or ginseng? I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Turmeric, ginkgo biloba, which apparently is a great treatment for people in the early stages of dementia. And the next ingredient is dehydrated eye of newt, which is a reference to something from Macbeth. It's just a silly name for mustard. Tombstone is tombstone. Tombstone soda. It's who's who, but worse. In a solo game, you go down, you have a chance to revive yourself and keep all your perks and equipment. Would be pretty cool if Tombstone had that effect in real life, but it probably won't because it's got embalming fluid, which is the stuff funeral homes use to slow decomposition inside a dead body. If embalming fluid gets ingested by a living person, it can cause bronchitis, body tissue destruction, brain damage, lung damage, impaired coordination, and inflammation and sores in the throat, nose, and esophagus. Chalk suspension is just chalk powder mixed with water. Duplicator spirits. This is the ink used for a spirit fluid duplicator machine. It's basically a hand cranked copy machine that was invented in the 1920s and apparently it was still being used in the 1970s. Reconstituted perk essence is not real, but it sounds like leftover waste from other perks just mixed together and reused. And finally, viscoelastic liquid silicone is used to make molds. Viscoelastic means that it has both properties of a solid and a liquid. The actual nutrients in Tombstone are way worse. It's got 250 grams of carbs, which is actually how much you're supposed to consume in a day. Then it has 35 grams of fat, which is half the recommended daily amount per day, and 40 grams of protein, which is also pretty close to the recommended daily amount. If you take in more protein than your body uses up, it gets stored as fat. So you better be working out if you're going to be drinking Tombstone. So we've already established that sodium is usually measured in milligrams instead of grams. And the FDA recommends that you only take in 2300 milligrams of sodium per day. Any more than that and you're putting yourself at risk for high blood pressure and possibly a stroke. Tombstone soda has about 180 grams of sodium. That is 180,000 milligrams of sodium. I don't know if it's the embalming fluid or the chalk suspension that makes it so salty, but after drinking this, you're probably gonna shrivel up like the old lady from SpongeBob. What? All of that, and it only has 30 calories. That's gotta be a lie. Uh, uh, uh. In Zombies, Mule Kick allows you to carry three weapons at a time. This perk probably isn't very practical in the real world unless you're in the military. Anyway, the calories in this aren't too bad. 30 again. Sodium, as usual, is at inhumane levels. 90,000 milligrams. And then it has 35 grams of total fat, which doesn't really correlate with any of the ingredients that I'm going to show you in a second. The carbs and sugars are also through the roof. I'm pretty sure these drinks redefine diabetes in a can. Protein. I'm sure you're going to need a lot if you're carrying three guns and even more heavy equipment, but you definitely don't need 200 grams of it. Most of that's going to make you chunky. Ingredients in Mule Kick are as follows. Beer. Liquid Cordite, which is an explosive chemical used inside bullets. 
That is usually what causes the bullet to shoot out of the barrel when a gun is fired. Cola nut, which is what gives Coca-Cola its caffeine. May not be entirely responsible for the caffeine content, but cola nut does have caffeine in it. Then we got trigger finger extract, not real. Vitamin B12 gauge, nice dad joke, Treyarch. And it has a warning that mule kick may contain hot lead. Depending on how much lead is in mule kick, you can filter it out through your pee. But if it's a high amount, you're going to get lead poisoning. Or according to the CDC, it's going to insta-kill you. Bad pun, I know. Seriously though, lead poisoning is not fun. It's an absolute waste of a perk. It just outlines zombies so you can see them through walls. It's zombies. I already know that the zombies are going to come at me from every which way. So I'm already alert anyways. Plus, I can hear them roaring in my ear. Anyways, nutrition facts. Calories, 2020. Haha, <laughs> get it? Total fat, 35 grams. Sodium, I really think this has to be a typo. There's no way the graphic designer thought sodium was measured in grams. I don't even think the largest animal on the planet can drink this stuff without having a stroke. The sodium in death perception is... Drum roll, please. 720 grams. Multiply that by a thousand, and you get... My gosh. Moving on to our ingredients. Carbonated formaldehyde. Carrot juice. It really feels like Treyarch tried to make some of these drinks sound healthy, but uh, the rest of these ingredients aren't helping. Next on the list is Epsom salts, powdered radar. This ingredient doesn't make sense to me unless they're talking about the glass from the radar screen. I'm probably overthinking this. And there's also post-mortem probiotics. PhD Slider is a reimagined version of PhD Flopper. After Black Ops 2, we weren't able to do dolphin diving anymore, so sliding became the norm in every Call of Duty. So in Black Ops 4 and Cold War, PhD Flopper made a comeback as PhD Slider. Whenever you slide into a zombie, you create a little burst of ethereum energy and kill a handful of zombies nearby. With the ingredients this drink has, there's no telling what it's going to do to you. Most of these items are related to explosives. Nitroglycerin, powdered graphite, and blasting cap extract. And then of course, the drink has to seem edible, so they added castor oil and distilled banana peel. Even if they are edible, I definitely would not eat them. Looking at the macros in PhD, there's 238.02 calories, which is the atomic weight of uranium. Fat is 70, carbs 90, sugar is 70, and protein is 30 grams. Now I left sodium for last because it's come to my attention that the graphic designer did not make a typo. It's been tested, people. PhD was taken to a lab and tested for sodium levels, and this is the result that came back. Not only is the sodium in this going to cause you ulcers and high blood pressure, possibly 10 strokes, a teaspoon of PhD is going to vaporize you on contact with your mouth. The sodium content in PhD slider is 1800 grams. That is 1.8 million milligrams of sodium. Treyarch, are you out of your mind? Just to get an idea of how bad this stuff really is, on average, humans take in 3,400 milligrams of sodium per day. Multiply that by 365, and you get 1,241,000 milligrams per year. The issue here is every day we are peeing it out. PhD is 1.8 million milligrams in one sitting. So while Coca-Colas are a fantasy food, if they existed in real life, they definitely are not meant for human consumption. If you want to get a good understanding of the full zombies storyline, check out this video on the left. And on the right is a random video just for your pure enjoyment.